Hi and welcome students to the instructional video on how to take resting heart rate. A few things that I wanted to take you through first before we go ahead and actually take a resting heart rate. The first thing I want to go through is the techniques for taking resting heart rate. We are going to instruct you today how to take the manual heart rate and we take the manual heart rate in one of two body positions or anatomical positions on our clients. The first anatomical position is the radial pulse. The radial pulse is located on the thumb side of the client. When we're taking pulse for our radial pulse, we take it using two fingers and simply placing the fingers on the gap between the radius bone and also the tendons that are there located on the wrist. By placing two fingers, on the side of the arm just like so, you can feel a nice light pulse. The second method that we use for taking resting heart rate or even exercising heart rate is the carotid pulse. Now the carotid pulse is located on the client's neck and what we are simply going to do there is using the same two finger grip and we should always inform the client that we're going to take the client's carotid pulse and explain to them exactly what we're going to do. So I'd simply say, I'm going to take your carotid pulse and I'm going to be finding your pulse on the, on, your, on the side of your neck. It's quite easy to find. You simply have to find this sternocleidomastoid muscle here and the gap between the windpipe. And there's just a, a slight hollow point in there. And by simply palpating that particular position, you will feel a light pulse there. The particular method that you decide to use for measuring pulse is a personal preference. The pulse on the carotid pulse along the neck is a much stronger pulse, so it is usually a bit easier to find, but at the same time it is a little bit more intimidating to take. When we're going ahead and taking the pulse, there's a couple of ways that we can do it. When we are taking the pulse, it's important to locate the pulse first, and then you've got to decide whether you're going to count the pulse for 10 seconds or 15 seconds. Usually it's the 15 second method that is preferable. Once you've, kept, you've counted the beats in that 15 second period, you simply multiply that number by four. So again, when we're doing it, we simply locate the pulse on the client, make sure that you've got the stopwatch ready. Now, when you're going ahead and taking the pulse, once you can feel it, the first beat that you actually feel is the zero beat. So when you start feeling the beat, you count zero and then start counting one, two, three. But make sure that when you actually Find the first beat, you start the stopwatch at the same time. 